Well, hi everyone. I'm sure you've seen these amazing videos of these freezing soap bubbles where you just blow a soap bubble outside, super cold temperatures, and the bubble freezes right before your eyes. Maybe you've tried this and you've had some success. Maybe the bubbles break before they freeze. Maybe there's some difficulties in setting up the photography, the camera settings and the focus and all that. Well, this video is gonna take care of all of that once and for all. So you are going to be an expert at freezing soap bubbles. Hi everyone, my name is Mike Shaw. I am your Nightscape professor. I do a lot of times getting out, looking up and shooting the night skies. And this is a little bit of a different one where we're gonna learn how to make these frozen soap bubbles. As you probably notice, I am not outside in sub-zero temperatures. I'm comfortably in the studio today, but we're gonna start with mixing up our soap bubble solution. Super easy to do. You can just make this with just, it's very inexpensive. We have just a pitcher of water just here. We have liquid dish soap. This is Dawn Ultra. We have some glycerin. This is kind of the secret ingredient. It helps stabilize the soap bubbles and help them from breaking. Some people use uh, corn syrup. Uh, I haven't tried that. I've used glycerin, it works well. We have a jar that we're gonna mix our soap mixture into. And we have a measuring cup. We have a measuring spoon. And then we have a spoon for just mixing everything up. We also have a cup and a soda can that we're gonna use for uh, supporting the bubbles as we blow them using straws. And that's really all there is to it. So I'm going to show you how I do this indoors. So uh, tomorrow when it's supposed to be five degrees uh, above, which is cold enough to do this, we'll be all set. Okay. All right. So now the, uh, the ratio, I often get asked the question, well, what's in the soap uh, bubble solution? And you've seen the raw ingredients. The ratio is not critical in my opinion. Uh, I'm going to give you a very rough uh, outline from what I use to mix up my soap bubbles but you may find that a slightly different mixture works equally as well. So this is certainly not something to worry too much about. I'm going to use uh, three parts roughly of water. So three of these of water. I'm then going to use uh, one, of, one part of the dish soap. That's one part of these. And this is a tablespoon. This is half a cup. So however much, you know, one or two tablespoons is uh, ratio wise to that, is going to be what we have. So to recap, we have three parts water, one part dish soap, and then I don't know, what would you say? Maybe one tenth of one part of, um, of glycerin. Now I know that doesn't add up to one part, but that's the beauty, beautiful thing about benchtop science is we get to uh, make it up as we go along. Okay, so let's do this. So I'm going to measure out three parts of water. So here's uh, part number one. There we go. Part number two. Isn't this exciting? Part number two and part number three. So we have three parts of water. Oh, I can feel the, uh, I can feel the soap bubbles almost appearing before me. All right, so that is our water. Then we're gonna have one part of this dish soap, roughly speaking. Yeah, da, da, da. There we go. Oh my gosh. Okay. Thank you very much. So this is one part of dish soap. Isn't that a beautiful color? I'm going to scrape this out, make sure I feel like a Julia Child here. <laughs> All right. La. Okay. So there we have that. And then, or as I say, so the glycerin, this is kind of a very important part because it really helps stabilize. Glycerin, glycerin is something that people use for uh, skin care. You know, it helps moisturize your skin. And I'm just going to put in, uh, that's one tablespoon. I'm going to just dump that in there like that. And here's my second tablespoon. Dump that in there like that. As you can see, this is a, essentially a lifetime supply of bubble solution. So you have my permission to... Uh, market this and sell this as, as, as much as you want. All right, so now we're going to mix this up like so. And that's really all there is to it. We now have a beautiful, um, a beautiful set of soap bubble solutions. So now let me show you how easy it is to, um, to actually blow the bubbles. And the, the, the trick that I found is you want to have a support that has um, some type of a, a rim built in. And this helps stabilize, it's like a little cradle for the soap bubble, whoops. Um, so the, you can use a, a, a can like this, but something about, this is about an inch and a half in diameter. This is gonna be about the size of the 
uh, soap bubble that you're going to blow. If you have something that's considerably larger than this, like a coffee cup with a big base, that may be difficult. So I wouldn't advise that. If something is too small, then you're going to be limited to relatively small soap bubbles. All right, but let's give it a try. So we have our uh, uh, straws. So we're going to take a, a straw like so. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer a small amount of the solution to this, uh, this depression at the base of the, of the can. And then I'm going to gently inflate the bubble from that solution that's in the, in the base of the can. So the way I transfer the solution is I could pour it, but that's A, really messy, and B, when it's freezing outside, it's very, I don't know, kind of inefficient and a mess. So I'm gonna use this siphoning technique or pipetting technique. And if you haven't done this, it's super easy. What you do is you have the straw that you hold like so, and you can stick your thumb over the tip of the straw like this. So I'm gonna have my thumb off the straw. I'm gonna put it about a half an inch into the solution. I'm gonna put my thumb down, and then when I pull it out, what you see here is I have some solution that's uh, in the straw. It's a great physics lesson, but we'll save that for a different time. If I let go with my thumb, you see it come out, drop. So I can put it in like that. So I'm going to put it in, I'm going to put my thumb down, I'm going to lift it up, and I'm going to use this pipetting mechanism to transfer a small amount of solution into the cup, into the base of this uh, depression. So now I have this small amount of liquid just here, and all I simply do is I, I inflate the bubble. Uh, the key I want to point out is after I've inflated the bubble, you keep the straw inside the bubble, and then you withdraw the straw like so. How easy was that? So that's really all there is to it. You can see it's quite stable. It's not, I mean, this is the same technique, by the way, that people blow these enormous soap bubbles, but um, that stayed uh, inflated long enough for the soap bubble surface to freeze if this temperature were uh, sub-zero or, or cold. So let's, let's just do that again. Whoops, that one got away from me. Now you'll see right here how I did that. I left the straw in the bubble. Oh, the straw is escaping. The, the... That was kind of neat. Do you see? I'm going to transfer some more liquid over. Whoops. Oh well, what can you do? Now, if, to to recap, so that how easy is that? If I stick the straw in the um, soap bubble, the surface tension. Well, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Anyway, folks, that's all there is to it, to making frozen soap bubbles. We'll see you outside in the sub-zero temperature, and all you'll be able to see are my eyes and the camera, but we'll get to the, uh, the camera technique next. But that's how you make uh, very stable, oops, that's how you make very stable soap bubbles for frozen soap bubbles. Hey everyone, welcome back. It's uh, Mike Shaw here again. We're gonna blow some frozen soap bubbles here in St. Paul, Minnesota. The temperature is five degrees. It's a crisp February morning in midwinter and we're all set. We have our ice bubble solution, soap bubble solution from yesterday in the studio. You may recall this. We have our support structure, which in this case is a cup upside down. So they have that nice cradle for the ice bubbles. And now let's talk about the photography. There's two main things you wanna keep in mind. First of all, you want to be directly in line with a bright light source, in this case, the sun. The reason being is the bright light from the sun, when it comes through backlighting the ice crystals, really makes them pop. You have the nice, beautiful uh, light from the sun scattering off the ice crystals. Sometimes you can see little colors from the prisms inside the crystals. It's really, really something to see. The rest of the soap bubble, on the other hand, is clear and transparent. So it's, it's not there. So you, if you have a dark background, like I do with the small patch of woods on the other side of the street here, then you get a nice contrast. The second thing to keep in mind is to use a, as close of a lens, basically to use a macro lens if you can, with a very high uh, f-stop. In this case, we're using f-36. And the reason for this is we're very close to the soap bubbles, um, and roughly about a foot and a half, uh, but with a 105 millimeter uh, focal length. What that uh, focal length does is it allows us to really magnify the soap bubble and the macro lens allows us to focus very close to the soap bubble and the high f-stop or aperture allows us to get the depth of field. So with that, we're all set. We're going to uh, check our focus on the, uh, oh, focus looks good. We're gonna start recording. 
the recording is definitely going and we're going to blow some frozen soap bubbles now you may recall the technique is to take the soap bubble solution insert a straw about half an inch in cap the top with my thumb and that way we kind of pipette a small amount of the soap bubble solution wherever we want to place it in this case we want to place it directly on the uh, surface which we do and now we're hopefully going to blow a soap bubble oops let's try that again Oops. There we go. Oh, I can see the little crystals dancing around in there. Oh, it's magnificent. So here's a close up of the process. I'm transfer the solution over. Now you'll notice that as I inflate the straw, as I inflate the soap bubble, I keep, I lift the straw off the bottom of the cup and hold it inside the bubble as I inflate it. So we'll do that once again. Oh, you can see the crystals forming. Absolutely beautiful. Every day it's different. Sometimes if there's wind, you get crystals forming from the top. I'm gonna to cover the front surface of my lens while I blow the, away the bubble. That protects the uh, crystals in case they fall back onto the lens. Let's try it again. There we go. Watch how I, when I blow, I, I, li I blow with the straw about right here. I start down here and I lift it up. Whoops. Try that again. Ah, the wind's picking up. Let's try some more solution. There we go. Nice. So here are some images from January earlier this year when it was much colder. And you can see that the ice crystals are forming almost immediately. This is eight below zero as opposed to today where it's five above zero so it's a 13 degree difference and again you can see how the uh, ice crystals form almost immediately uh, much faster you can see the same uh, cup of the you know the cradle from the cup and you can also see it's kind of interesting there's sort of a contrast between the crystals forming within the soap bubble and the ones that form up from the base so there's kind of a trade-off between which ones form first do they form from the top of the side within the top of the soap bubble in which case you get these kind of round hexagonal you know snowflake crystals or do you get these ferns that grow up from the base um, but in all cases you can see how i inflate the soap bubble with the straw and then lift the straw up from the base while the soap bubble is being inflated so that's just to give you a sense of of what's possible there and that's really all there is to it. Uh, backlighting, telephoto lens, secret ingredient glycerin. Have fun making your own frozen soap bubbles. Take care.